Hi guys, I'm Jesse at strowpro.com and today I'm going to be showing you the brand new X600 Pro. This is a brand new strobe aimed at the professional user. It's got a number of different improvements over the original X600. Just to be clear, this is not replacing the X600 II. It's just an additional strobe. So I'm going to show you what's in the bag here and we're going to get started. You can purchase the X600 Pro in two different ways, just as the unit itself, or you can get it with a kit. Um, I'm showing you with the Traveler kit bag here, um, but just be aware that if you're just purchasing the strobe, obviously this bag is not going to come with it, although I do highly recommend it because it is specifically designed for the strobe. So we're going to take a look inside what's going to come with your new X600. So first of all, this is going to be the new reflector, which we're going to show a little bit more in depth. We've got the battery here. This is our brand new flash tube. And then of course we have the unit itself. And the only additional things that we're going to have are the two pieces of the battery charger. So, those pieces make up the complete kit here, unless you're ordering this as a full functioning studio kit. So I just want to point out a couple of key differences um, of this light compared to the original X600 version 2. So with the Pro here, the first thing that you're going to notice when you take a look at the body is this whole new mounting bracket. So this bracket now is fully metal. So right from here all the way over to the end, um, you're also going to notice the power button is down here and we have a new umbrella slot on the, slot, on the side here. Um, the handle is also all new and one of the big things you'll notice is that there's no more stepless gears in there to adjust the tilt. This is just a seamless um, tilt and we can lock it in there. If Same as the other one, if this is locked in position you need to get it out. We can lift the handle turn it out of position to wherever we want. And then of course you've just got your regular uh, spigot locking screw right there. Now the next thing you're going to notice is on the front of this unit. So right away you're going to see this big aluminum heat sink here. The reason why this is on here is for cooling for the new 38 watt modeling lamp. Now this is an LED modeling lamp. Um, a lot more powerful. The previous version was a 10 watt, so you're going to get a lot more out of this. There is a couple of drawbacks, which I'll show you further on, mainly being the fan that it uses to cool that. So if we go to the next thing here, we're looking at our new modeling lamp. So this is actually a little bit bigger than the previous version. What you're also going to see is the front of it is frosted. Uh, right on the end there. So I would recommend using gloves to handle this. You don't want to put oily fingerprints on the frosted because that will leave your fingerprints in there. Um, and this tube is vented all around. So all these little holes in the uh, UV glass um, help cool this down as well. Another new item that's going to be included with your strobe is the umbrella reflector. Um, so you're going to have the cover on here. This can be a little bit tight when it's brand new. So this has to come off before you power up that strobe. You would have no idea how many of these we see come back from different uh, strobes. The protective cover is melted because you forget about them. There is a warning label on. Take it off. Make sure that gets off before you do anything else. So the big difference you're going to notice about this between the X600 II reflector is that this mounts flush. So you're still going to have your three prong Bowens adapter. So one, two, three. Um, like every other Strobe Pro accessory, this mounts to all of our lights. So all you've got to do, line that up. You're going to twist it till it goes flush, quarter turn, and release it. Now you can see that that's a really sleek look in that. Um, it doesn't extrude very far. If you want to use the standard reflector, so you can order the X600 II reflector. That's our 7 inch which has the umbrella cut out. So if you want to use barn doors or you want to use the honeycomb grid set, that's the reflector that you want for this one as well. So just, just as easy to take as an accessory off, we've got the accessory uh, pullback lock here. So all we do, 
pull that back. So same way that comes back quarter turn the other way and that's released. So really easy. Then we have our battery here, which we will get mounted in a second. But before we do that, it's always a good idea to put the modeling lamp in. You don't want to be putting the modeling lamp and flash tube in when you've got the, out, the power connected already. So I'm not using gloves because this is our demo unit, but you should use gloves just so you don't damage this glass and get fingerprints all over it. The way that we're going to put this in is really quite easy. We've got four prongs on here. So we're just going to make sure that these two bottom ones are lining up with the two bottom ones right here. So that goes in and then those top two line up. So you should never be forcing anything at this point. Okay. Those just set in and we're just going to push straight down. That's mounted. We're ready to go. So now we're ready to put the battery on here and the battery compartment is similar to the original X600, but keep in mind that none of these accessories, um, except the reflector would fit um, the original X600. This is all new. So the modeling lamp, the battery, um, and any of the accessories that we'll release for the pro version are exclusive to the pro version. So don't order one thinking it's gonna work on the other. Modifiers are fine. Anything else needs to be for that specific stroke. So all we're going to do here, we've got four kind of tabs on the battery here. So they line up with the battery on the back. So all you're going to do, and you, you can tell that it's up because you've got the connection there and connection there. And you've also got the LEDs and stuff on the top, which I'll show you. So basically all we're doing, line those in flush. It's going to be about a quarter inch up at that point. Once it's flush, we just push it down. Now it's locked in. So just to show you on the top here, we've got a couple of different ports on here. So on under this flap here, we've got the wireless port. So that's for an older legacy trigger um, like the FT16. We're not really using that anymore but it is there in case you needed to use it. Under the other flap, if you get your fingernail under there, we can pull that up. We've got our 3.5 PC sync port. So if you needed to plug a pocket wizard or a different trigger in, then you could do that. Highly not recommended because this has the XT triggering system, which is far superior. And then we have our USB-C port in there as well. So right here, you'll see that that's different than the previous version uh, now being USB-C. So that's for firmware updates, which you can find on our website. And one very last thing under here, just pull this up on the battery. This is the battery charging port. Okay. So when you want to charge this, you are going to take your end of your charging, plug it in and then plug it into the wall. Just keep in mind, no, you cannot have this plugged into the wall and charging at the same time. It generates too much heat. If you want to use this, you're going to purchase the AC adapter at a further date that will allow you to have it plugged into the wall instead. This is strictly for charging. And usually we recommend charging this by taking the battery off and then plugging it in. Okay, guys, we're all set up here. We've got a reflector on, our battery is connected. Now we just need to attach this to the stand. Very simple. We're just going to loosen this lever over here. So just loosen that guy, which is gonna release here. Back off the thumb screw. We're gonna drop it onto any light stand that has a standard spigot. Once it's on there, tighten that guy down lock it in. And then we're going to tighten the tilt on the other side. So because of this new locking system, you really got to be careful. You don't want to have that loose because this will just go wherever. So you want to make sure that you've locked that into position so it's not going to bother you. And again, if the handle's in the way, you can pull that back and twist it out of the way. Okay guys, so we're going to get into the menu system here and see what makes this light the pro version. So one of the things I want to mention right off the top, the biggest difference between this and the X600 II, number one is the color stabilization. So this light from across the whole power range only varies 75 degrees, which puts it on par with some of the most expensive lights on the market at a fraction of the price still. 
So it doesn't matter if you're at 1256 or full power, that is only gonna vary 75 degrees. So for your most demanding color accurate jobs, this light cannot be beat. The other thing is gonna be the modeling lamp, 38 watts as I mentioned before. So now it's actually useful as a modeling lamp. The one previously was kind of just to find focus. This has a lot more usefulness to it. Now there's a couple tradebacks to those things. Number one, um, the battery life is a little bit decreased. This is gonna give you 360 full power flashes versus 450 on the other one. Now the reason why this is less is because this will deliver full power 600 watts in less than one second. So from 0 0.01 seconds at lowest power to only 0.9 seconds at full power. It's really unbelievable to achieve this kind of performance out of a battery powered strobe. Um, now, the other thing about this, we've still got full TTL, high speed sync, all the features that we loved in the old one just changed a little bit. So let's get right into the menu system and I'll show you all the good features that we've got in here. Okay guys, to turn this light on is a little bit different than the previous version. The button for power is down here. So we're just gonna hold that for two seconds. It'll power up the strobe and we're good to go. To turn it off, it's just one push and it'll come right off. So now it's down below. You're not gonna hit that and have any issues accidentally turning it off. So if we go over to the screen here, uh, you're gonna notice that we've got some big group letters. It makes it a little bit easier to see when you've got this up on a stand or something, which group is this light on? Now you can see it a bit easier. Now we can change our group. We've still got five groups. If we go over here to the group button, A, B, C, D, E, and we can fully control those on the actual light or on the controller, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. Now, in this mode, when you turn your light on, it's just its basic mode. So if you plugged in a radio trigger, say an old pocket wizard or something into the uh, PC sync port up there, this is the mode that you would be using it in. Again, it's got so much technology in it, it would be a shame to use a trigger like that because this is all built in. So we've got a couple of modes in that just basic um, configuration. We've got manual mode, we've got multi-burst mode, and that's it, TTL is not enabled in that because we do need the trigger to enable TTL. So if we push this wireless symbol over here, this is going to activate our wireless. So you're gonna see a couple of things happen there. So we've got our group and our channel, actually the group was always there, but it adds the channel up top and you can see the little wireless symbol come on there. So our channel over here, we just have to pick a channel. It doesn't matter what channel, there's 32 channels, plus actually in the menu, the custom functions, I'm gonna show you a bit later, there's a whole ID. You can literally have thousands of different channel combinations, so you should have no problem finding a channel that won't interfere. So to set that, we're just gonna hold the channel group button right there. So if I hold that, it's gonna highlight the channel up there, and then we can just rotate that to wherever we want, pick a channel, push the middle button, it's locked in. So on wireless, again, we're gonna have um, different options. So we have regular manual mode, we can go to multi, and then if we had the trigger, it would show TTL there as well. Oh, actually it is showing TTL. Um, we'll go back to manual here. To adjust the power, we can use the wheel, just adjusting the wheel up and down. We'll lock it in, it'll automatically lock for you or you can push set to get back out of that menu system. One of the nice things here, we have high speed sync. Now, if you're using the triggering system, you don't usually need to worry about this unless you have an older camera. When I push the high speed sync, it'll enable it on there, but most cameras will automatically activate that once you go over your camera's native shutter speed. So for Nikon 1 250th, Canon 1 200th and most of the other ones like Sony, uh, Fuji, Panasonic Olympics or uh, Olympics, Olympic are around 1 200th there. It just depends on your actual camera model. So that should automatically activate for you. So we don't have to worry about that too much. Um, one of the big new features here is the modeling lamp. We've got a couple of different options on that modeling lamp. 
So that's activated down here. When we push that once, it's going to just turn on. Now you're going to see the power down there. If I want to set the power, I'm going to hold that. Now it's switched to prop. Prop just means that I can adjust the power up or down. The modeling lamp's going to get brighter or dimmer accordingly. And we'll try to show you on the wall after um, what that's doing exactly here. But it is quite bright now, so you don't have to worry near as much about um, finding a modeling lamp that's going to be powerful enough. So if I go back to the beginning here, that's off. Now I've pushed it again. I'm just going to get out of the TT or I'm in manual mode. I'm just going to hold that. Okay, so now it goes to, you'll see down here, I'm on 10%. And I can turn that up with the dial if I want to specifically dial in a power. Now, one of the things, if you're wondering why this all of a sudden gets somewhat noisy, it's because the fan is kicked on now to cool that modeling lamp. They generate a tremendous amount of heat at the connection. So when I showed you in the beginning, that big heat sink, it's cooling it down in addition with the fan. So it'll keep it nice and cool. So your light's not going to overheat on you. If you don't need the modeling lamp on, I suggest keeping it on low or just turning it off completely. I'm going to show you multi-burst mode really quick. What multi-burst does is allow you to capture a shot in succession in the same frame. So we can set the number of shots and the frequency of the flash burst. So I need to go over to multi-burst mode. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit the set button right here. So when I hit the set button, I can choose the number of shots. Once I've chosen the number of shots I want, I can set the Hertz to whatever I want, lock it in, and then I can hit the test button and it'll blast off that many shots every time I hit the test button like that. It's extremely fast and it is limited um, depending on your power setting. So if I want to bring that power up, it's going to get to a certain point where the number of shots is not going to recycle fast enough for the Hertz that I've set. And you can check that in the manual, actually. It'll give you a chart there uh, and you can see that. But that's kind of a fun feature that you can play around with. You can see I turned up the power and blinded our camera guy here, but uh, it's a fun feature to have there. Just a quick overview of TTL here as well. So I've turned on the wireless again, so I've got uh, TTL enabled. When I go over to TTL, we don't have power to adjust anymore because the camera is going to be making those decisions for us. But what we do have is exposure compensation. And you can see right in the middle there, I'm showing zero, zero. What that means is I've got three stops of exposure compensation. I can either go up three stops or down three stops. So if you don't like what your camera's choosing for you, you can basically override that without going into full manual. The way we do that, we hit the set button right there, and then we can change the dial, plus three, or minus three. So that can be really useful in a pinch and you can do that from the controller, which is normally where we would do it. Kind of defeats the purpose of TTL if you're really walking over to your light all the time and having to, to fumble through the menu system. Um, so we would normally do that on the controller and I'll show you that. One more thing I forgot to mention is the sound button down here. So I'm just going to switch out of this mode actually. We'll go into manual. So when I flash, it's got the recycling beep there. If I turn it off, it's not going to do that anymore. So really easy there. Uh, let me show you about the custom functions in this real quick. And we'll just get right into those by pushing the menu button. So we have a dedicated menu button now, which is a little bit different. So when I get in here, the first thing that I'm going to have is the color mode. So this is one of the big features of this light, the color mode. It's a specific setting. So when I go in here, I push the set button and turn it on. Now I'm in that color accurate mode. I have that 75 degrees across the entire range. This is not available in multi mode. So just be aware of that. This would be regular TTL or just manual mode. So if I go to our next one here, um, we have the optical slave. So what the optical slave does is we have S1. So S1 turns the optical sensor, which is on the top of the unit up here. So what that's doing is looking for another flash to trigger it. 
because probably you're gonna be using the XT controllers, you don't need to worry about that, but it's a nice option to have. S2 is basically the same thing, but if you're working with a flash that has a pre-delay, this will ignore that. So like a red eye flash or a TTL flash emits an infrared burst, it will ignore that and then flash on the next one. So our next feature here has to do with the modeling lamp. We can either leave it on continuous, so it's always on even when the flash tube is firing, or we can do intermittent, which means that the modeling lamp will turn off when, it's, uh, when the flash tube is firing. This thing fires so fast that you might not even notice it, but if I go into here, I'm gonna go, continuous is the default, I'm gonna go into intermittent, and I'm just gonna get out of the menu here. And I'm going to turn the modeling lamp back on and it's on 60% here. Now we're on prop. Okay. So when this fires now, you're going to see that that modeling lamp turns off. I'm going to close my eyes because it's blinding me here, but you can see it turn off like that. Now, if I go back into the menu, I'm going to go Put it back on continuous just so you can see here. Now when I fire, it's staying on. So that's what that menu function is going to do for you. So our next function here is the standby. So this will automatically turn the light off if you need it to. So we have a bunch of different settings in here that we can put it on. That's just to say battery power. Uh, if I go into the next one here, we have the light. So I've left this on just for the video here. This will keep the backlight on or you can go to 15 seconds or have it off completely. So just for the video, we'll leave that on. Otherwise I would leave it on 15 seconds. All right, so next we have the delay. You can preset the delay to whatever you want on there. Um, probably something you're not necessarily gonna use a lot. Now these next two functions here, we have the units. Um, for masking and then we have the alt units. These two are used kind of in conjunction with each other. This, this strobe has the ability to do masking. So what that is used for typically is going to be for high volume product photography. You can set groups of these lights to fire um, on the background and then fire on the subject. And what it does is it creates a silhouette which masks out in Photoshop really easily. We'll do a specific video on that for right now. It's not something you're going to use unless you're really um, into high volume product photography or need to do some really high speed sports photography. There's a couple unique things that we can do in there, but that'll be in a separate video. The LCD uh, it just controls the contrast. I don't really find this really makes a big difference at all. So like you can see when I rotate through them, um, it's nothing really specific. So don't worry too much about that. You can set it uh, wherever you want. Then we have the ID. This is to do with the channel. So if you ran out of 32 of your standard channels, we have a whole bunch of ID units that we can match up to the controller itself. Um, and that will be, give you infinite options basically on your channels. Then we have a reset. So if we don't like any of the settings that we did, we can just hit reset and it's gonna beep and bring it all back to default again. One of the great features about this strobe is its compatibility with the X series. This means that with Fuji, Panasonic, Olympus, um, Canon, Nikon, and Sony, we can fully control this light in TTL. We've got high speed sync. We've got distance range for the power control up to 300 feet. Um, so really it's an all in one package on this light. I'm just going to give you a really brief overview of the XT controller hooking up with the strobe. We've done a previous video, which shows you really in depth, all the features on the XT controller but I just wanna show you how easy it is. So basically, as I showed before, we're just gonna set our channel up there. We do that by holding the group and channel button. So when I hold that, it's going to light that up, the group channel, and then we just rotate the dial. I'm just gonna leave it where it is. We're set there. We're on group A, indicated by the big A. When I turn this guy on, we happen to be in channel one up at the top there 
and we're in group A as well. Now I can control the power just by rotating the dial, it's super easy. All these power settings, if you turn this off and then back on, they stay saved. So you don't have to worry about that as well. Um, it's really handy. So we can uh, set that. We've got our test button here. So once we have our group and channel set, everything's good. That's all gonna stay. Even if we turn either of the light, the light or the controller off, it stays locked in there. If I wanna go to the dial now, I can just rotate the power. You're gonna see a change on both of them set it to wherever I want, hit the test button, it's gonna fire and we're good to go. If I hit the zoom button here, if I have multiple lights, I'm just gonna pull out of the zoom and all my strobes will be listed. So I can choose a different one, um, change the mode, do whatever I want there. Super, super easy. So check out the full in-depth control. There is two things I'd actually just wanna show you now that I remembered in the menu system here. So if we go, back to menu um, just by pushing this button here what we've got to remember to do if we scroll down okay so our distance mode right here we have 0 to 30 when we're using it really close to each other we want to make sure that we have that um, set from 0 to 30 that just gives us range for the uh, wireless to be able to communicate on the radio. If we don't have that, you can get some misfires, especially when you're this close to each other. The other feature I'm gonna show you is the minimum power in the menu system. So this light, the X600 Pro, will go down to 1256, so nine stops of power, which is crazy low. We need to enable the controller because not every light does that. So we have 1128 for like speed lights, 1256, that'll be our X200s, uh, our X600s, and the X600 Pro as well. Once we have that, those are the only two real menu functions we need to make sure we're using. Um, and everything else will be explained in the in-depth tutorial on this controller. Hopefully this in-depth look has given you kind of a really good idea about what the X600 Pro is all about. It has the 75 degree uh, Kelvin color variance across the entire range, which is absolutely insane for a strobe, let alone a battery strobe. So that's really one of the main features. The, also, the other feature that you're getting is the 38 watt modeling lamp, which is much improved. Now you're also getting the insane recycling speed. 0.9 seconds at 600 watts is just crazy for not only a plug-in strobe, but for a battery strobe, it really can't be beat. And at this price point, you can put this against the highest end lights in the market and it's gonna be competitive, if not beat those every time. So you've also got your full uh, Sony, Panasonic, Fuji, uh, Nikon and Canon compatibility with the controller, 300 foot range, I mean, TTL high speed sync. Um, it's really quite remarkable. And remember, you've got all the compatibility with the Strobe Pro series of modifiers. So anything that takes a Bowens mount, which is basically anything that we sell, will fit this light. So you don't have to go get new modifiers just to use this. We've got new accessories coming out for this all the time. Take a look at strobepro.com. And until next time, I'm Jesse. Mm -hmm.